Hello everybody! Today I am here to talk about all of the books that I read in July. I read nine books in July. I know booktube is on started on the last two days of July and I did read a few books in that but I'm just including them in my August wrap up because it's easier. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, I read nine books. As always, I'm going to start with my least favorite book that I read, working up to my favorite. And also, as always, any reviews I have done of these books, I will leave them down below. The lip color is too dark for me. Goodness, I'm not used to this darkness of the rip. Oh my gosh, anyway. The first book I want to talk about, my least favorite of the month, is Something in the Water by Katherine Steadman. This is a adult thriller novel, and I did not enjoy it really at all. I gave it like a 3 out of 5. I think if I'm being super realistic, it'd be like a 2.75 out of 5. I didn't hate the mystery aspect of this book. I didn't hate like the plot. I hated the main characters. I didn't like either of them, didn't empathize with either of them. I just, I don't know, it's something about me. I have to, even if it's an unlikable main character, I have to connect with them or feel for them in some sort of capacity. And if I don't, it really kind of hinders my process of enjoying a book. So I think that's the case of this one. This one is about a couple that gets married and they go on a honeymoon to an exotic island I forget where they go and they find this they find something in the water something that affects the rest of their life and they make decisions based on this thing that they find and they're not the best decisions the main characters like 95% of their decisions I disagreed with like I was like this is wrong this is stupid why would you do this and I know that makes for a good book but goodness gracious I really did not like these main characters which is why I did not enjoy this book so if you really love if you really love thrillers things like that I don't know if I would recommend this one it's one of my least favorite ones I've read not of all time but perhaps of this year but yeah the chalk it up to really unlikable main characters for this one for me. The next book I also gave a 3 out of 5 and that is The Lido by Libby Page. This one I was kind of disappointed with. I really thought I was going to give this a book 4 or 5 because if you're a fan of A Man Called Uwe or if you're a fan of Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Both of those I love. You will love this book and I did enjoy it. I just didn't enjoy it as much as those two. This is an adult novel where we have a main character who works for a newspaper and basically she learns the Lido is closing which in Britain the Lido means like a community pool I believe or maybe it's a pool you have to pay a membership for but it's like a pool. Like here we just call it like a pool. I don't know but I guess in Britain they call it the Lido. I'm not sure. But either way she goes to the Lido and you know starts to do some investigating of why it's closing and it's an 86 year old woman named Rosemary who loves Alito and spends every day there and basically they form a friendship and you learn more about Rosemary's life and things like that and it's basically a book about friendship blooming in the unlikely of places and I did enjoy it I feel like it was a great heartfelt novel but I didn't take away much from this it's I feel like there's books like this I've read before kind of like A Man Called Uwe and Eleanor Alphant but I feel like those were executed a little bit better and I feel like the characters had more dimension to them and it had a little bit more heart. This one does have a lot of heart but it just kind of fell flat for me sadly so I gave it a three out of five. I mean if you're looking for a heartwarming story and if you're a huge huge fan of those I would recommend that but if it's would I say it's the best heartwarming you know unlikely friendship story? No sadly but I did enjoy it. It was a quick fast read and I learned and I love learning about Rosemary's life and things like that. So yeah three out of five. Kind of just the middle of the road book for me honestly. Also I'm gonna be with I'm gonna be honest with you a lot of these books that I read this month are three or fours. There was only two that I really really enjoyed. The rest I kind of just liked sadly. Months are like that sometimes. The next one I want to talk about is Three Wishes by Liam Moriarty. I read this book because I'm trying to read all of Leanne Moriarty's books. I'm sure you've heard of Leanne Moriarty because she wrote Big Little Lies, but she's but she's also written a ton of other books and I read the majority of them. I've read Big Little Lies, The Husband's Secret, What Alice Forgot, The Hypnotist Love Story, Truly Madly Guilty. So I've read like five of them and she has two other ones that her, are her oldest ones that I have not read. So I'm trying to read all of her books in anticipation for her newest one coming out in November and then when that one comes out I want to film an author related video where I talk about all of her books. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just trying to read a lot of her books. So this is I think her very first novel she ever published if I'm not mistaken. Triplet. So we have three sisters. Their names are Lynn, Kat, and Gemma and basically they're celebrating their 34th um, birthday and at the beginning, at the beginning, it is classic Leanne Morty style. She opens up like with a dinner and something not tragic. This is not like a mystery book, but all of her books kind of have a mystery element. Like these triplets get in a fight and they're like, you ruined my life. And they just all kind of walk out and you're like, what happened? And then, you know, we go throughout the course of the book learning more about these sisters. So that's 
kind of her style and I'm happy to say that it's been that way since her very first book but I can tell this was her very first book. The characters weren't very fleshed out. I didn't really love any of them. I empathized with them all in different ways and I connected with them but I didn't love them. They all had really big faults of their own that I was like oh goodness but at the end this is not my favorite Liam Moriarty book and I wasn't expecting it to be but it's enjoyable. I love the way she writes. I will always read whatever she writes because it's so immersive and I can get very involved in the story so I would say I would give this one a 3 out of 5. I put this on the spectrum of all of her books that I've read. It's kind of in the lower bracket I guess but it's enjoyable. If you're a big fan of Liam Moriarty and her other books I would recommend it. I have now I have one more to read and I'll be like officially caught up till a new one comes out so super excited. The next three books I want to talk about I gave them all a three and a half out of five. The first one so really these are just all kind of lumped in that category. The first one is The Death of Mrs. Westaway or Ruth Ware, another thriller that I read this month and another kind of so-so thriller. You guys know my love-hate relationship with Ruth Ware. I've read all of her books. I don't seem to really enjoy any of them but this is my favorite of her books. Kind of like a not even a gothic horror but it's kind of set in like in a gothic setting. We have our main character, I forget her name, um, Harriet, no, no, yeah, Harriet, and she receives a letter in the mail saying that her grandmother has died and bequeathed her her estate. Harriet knows it is a mistake because her grandparents have been dead for like 15 years, but Harriet is really not doing well. Her mother has passed away recently and she's having trouble keeping up with her finances and her job and things like that. So she decides, hey, why not see how this plays out and goes to this estate and pretends to be somebody else and she gets involved with the family drama and things like that. I did enjoy it. Very atmospheric, which all of her books are. They're great if you want just straight up atmospheric reads, read any of her books, but that's kind of where my love falls. I like this book but I didn't love it. So while it is my favorite Ruth Ware book, it's not one of my favorite thrill books I've ever read, I felt like there were two big plot twists or mysteries in this book and one I could see coming. The other one it was very confusing. Like it was so confusing in the fact that I had to go back and read it like five times like that part to make sense of what the whole grand scheme of things were. It was just confusing so that's another thing I didn't like about it. But I did actually like the main character and usually with Ruth Ware books I do not like the main character at all so that's a good thing. So yeah three and a half. I'd say if you like Ruth Ware and you're like why do I continue to read her? I check out this one. I enjoyed it. It's not one of my favorite thrillers I've ever read, but I still liked Again, it. Again, a three and a half out of five is The Way You Make Me Feel by Marine Goo. This is a YA contemporary book all about our main character, Clara, who's kind of a prankster, and she's actually going on vacation with her mom to Tullum, Mexico in the summer. And then she does this big prank at her prom and she gets in trouble, so she has to work at her dad's food truck for the summer as punishment. And she's not only that, but she has to work with like her nemesis Rose on this food truck. It's all about a summer and her, you know, working on her dad's food truck and getting closer to her enemy and meeting a boy. And it's just kind of your quintessential summer read. I enjoyed it. I had a great time reading it. It made me smile. I love the food truck aspect so much because her dad's food truck's name is the is Cobra. So it's like Korean and Brazilian food mixed up together because that is his heritage and his culture. So I loved that. I'd say if you love contemporaries and you love a good summer contemporary this is a great one to read. I don't think I've heard a ton of people talk about it and it was really cute, really adorable. Love reading stuff like this in the summer so three and a half out of five. Really liked it. I know. And the last three and a half out of five book I want to talk about is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman and I know that's rated low. When I go to Goodreads the majority of reviews that I see for this book are either four out of five so I feel like I'm kind of the unpopular opinion here. I did enjoy this book but I didn't love it. This is about a girl named Frances. She's going to high school and she studies. She studies all the time because that is what she's good at is studying and, passes and passing tests and she really wants to get into Cambridge and things like that. The only thing that she really loves in her life is this podcast called Universe City and in this podcast it's kind of like a, if you've heard of the podcast Welcome to Night Vale podcast it's kind of like that in that regards um, and basically she makes fan art for this podcast and the podcast creator contacts her and says hey do you want to collaborate we could make stuff for the podcast and they meet up and she realizes it's somebody she already knows in real life and they form a friendship and it kind of delves into the creator's life as well of how they are struggling with depression and things like that so it's a very kind of hard-hitting contemporary 
I will say. It talks a lot about all those things I said, but I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's super rememberable. That's the only thing. And I didn't love the ending. The ending was very open-ended, which I usually don't mind with contemporaries, but this one I kind of wanted a more definitive closing. But like I said, I did really enjoy this one for all the many things that it talked about, hard-hitting things, and I love the podcast element, and I love just learning more about these characters and what they want out of life, and maybe, you know, they're struggling with their sexuality and what they define themselves as. So I did really enjoy it. I gave it a 3.75 out of 5, but I just feel kind of the unpopular because everyone gives this book a 5 out of 5, and I don't feel that way, sadly, so I'm sorry. Then the next book I would give three and a half, maybe 3.75 as well. And that is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager, another thriller this month. I read a lot of them. This, I think, is my favorite of the bunch of the, thr the thrillers, of the thrillers, gosh, so hard, that I read. Riley Sager also wrote Final Girls, which I loved. So I want to make character Emma. And Emma went to this camp called Camp Nightingale, I think. She was like 14, 15. And she got bunked with a bunch of older roommates, kind of. She, They were all like 16 or 17. And they become friends. And they teach her things. And then one night those three campers that she's bunk with disappears they never show up again and now we follow it 15 years later Emma is a painter now and she's and she still struggles with the disappearance of these campers she doesn't know where they've gone it really kind of haunts her and she gets an invite to go back to Camp Nightingale because they're opening it once more and they want Emma to visit and become a camp counselor. So she decides to go back to kind of investigate the disappearance of these three girls that no one's ever heard from or never been definitive as like murder or anything like that. So it's like a mystery in a camp setting, which I loved. Very atmospheric. I love the camp setting. Loved how creepy it was. I didn't love the final reveal at the end. I felt like it was kind of a cop out like I was like oh I didn't see it coming but I didn't enjoy it is what I'm saying so that's the one thing I didn't love about this book but I really love the way Riley Sager writes how it's immersive how I really get into it I really you know feel for the characters and the mystery and things like that so I'd recommend it a lot of people didn't like Final Girls so I'd still read it if you didn't like Final Girls and if you like Final Girls I'd still read it I enjoyed it 3.575 like whatever you want to call it. I liked it. The last two books are for sure my favorite of the month and the first one I want to talk about is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I gave this book a four and a half out of five. I loved every second of it. This book is the second book in the Jane series and this book is a retelling of Jane Eyre. A paranormal retelling of Jane Eyre. So we follow Jane and she becomes a governess much like Jane Eyre and she goes to work at Thornfield Hall and she meets Mr. Rochester and things like that. Only thing in this is Jane can see ghosts. There are certain people that could see ghosts and so Jane goes to Thornfield Hall and she sees that something is kind of amiss there. Mr. Rochester is dark and broody and handsome but he's even more so than he was in the you know the classic book. Also in this book Charlotte Bronte herself is a main character. She's actually a writer and she's kind of invested in Jane's life so she decides to write, you guessed it, Jane Eyre. I really enjoyed this book. It was funny. It was great. The authors actually talk to you. They'll say dear narrator and it's just such a good time. These books like aren't gonna stay with you forever but though like they're just so funny and so just I just love them for that. How funny they are and how whimsical and just atmospheric. This perfect book to read in the fall. I love that it was an insane version of Jane Eyre like not even like kind of accurate but they did so well with it and I really love the spin and twist with the ghosts they put on it because there was a society in this book where like people actually go find ghosts and kind of relocate them. I loved it. Four and a half out of five would recommend if you're looking for a good time with the book such a good time. The last book I want to talk about is my favorite of the month and that is Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. This is my third Kristen Hanna book and I'm still am grappling with giving this a 5 out of 5 because I don't know if I feel that way. I want to say maybe like a 4.75 out of 5 but I still really enjoyed it. It's my favorite of the month honestly. This is about two um, characters named Tully and Kate and Kate and Tully have been best friends like ever since they were teenagers when they turned 13 and it basically goes throughout their life how they lead very different lives but they always stay with each other no matter what happens you know Kate goes on to become a mother and um, a wife and things like that until he goes off to be a famous reporter but they all still but they still stay a constant in each other's life and this book like all of her other books just kicks you right in the freaking gut with feelings like every single one of her books that I've read I have sobbed through it 
and it's just endless sobs like goodness gracious this might be the saddest of her books that I've read I will say that because the other two I think you can see coming and you're prepared for it this one just kicks you like in the freaking face with sadness and that's, oh god that's kind of why I can't even give it a five out of five because it made me so sad like there's a sequel to this book and I don't even think I can bring myself to read it for like another year because of how sad this book was like gosh so freaking sad. I love the friendship. I love Kristen Hannah's writing, but the sadness of this book was just astonishing. And I mean, it makes me, I want to read all of her books, but I feel like I need a freaking vacation of happy things after I read one of her books because that's how sad they all are. But this one, I could say I loved it. I loved all of her books that I've read. This one is the saddest for sure. So if you think the other two made you cry that I read, lose way to read this one. So yeah, there is a sequel called Fly Away. I will read it one day when my heart will be ready, which probably will be never. <laughs> I love this book. Cries, cries. I can't even look at it without thinking about how much it made me cry. <sighs> Either way, if you've read any of the books I talked about, please leave me what you thought down below. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.